Hello everyone and welcome to Time Out with Sports Adda. Hi Arun and we are going to we are going to talk about a different league today. Uh, not Indian T20 league, we are going to talk about the Pakistan T20 league. So how is it how is it been for you watching the PSL this year? It's a different T20 league, Akhil. But, uh, you know, roll back the clock to last year, it's pretty much similar, similar place. You know, we were talking about the Indian T20 league in the UAE. You know, now it's, it's PSL there. But yeah, I mean, it, it's one competition that's rated highly. Uh, if you remember, I, I remember a couple of years ago, Akhil, when, you know, they, they were raving about PSL being the, the best T20 league in the world. Uh, particularly when it comes to the bowling attack and the bowling the performances. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to these last few games. Yes, it's been, been a very interesting, uh, interesting year for the PSL organizers. I can, I can imagine it will be very tough, and you have to cancel the tournament in between, and then you have to reschedule, uh, make sure the availability of all the players is uh, is, is the prime importance. Uh, they had worked so hard to get the tournament back to Pakistan, if you remember. And now again, having to go to Abu Dhabi, UAE, it's been a tough one, especially missing, missing the foreign players. Uh, that will be a big impact. Yeah, organizing a, a tournament of this this sort itself is a challenge. Uh, but to you know, abandon the tournament midway and to restart it again, uh, well done to everybody you know involved uh, in in making sure the the wheels are rolling again. Uh, you wouldn't want to be in their shoes because you don't know that there are logistics involved, uh, involved, player availability, you know, there's a small matter of contracts as well. You know, how do you honor contracts of the players who were there previously but not available now? How do you draw up contracts of players who are joining in now? So, so lots yeah. of things involved but uh, excellent job by uh, all the guys at the PCB. Alright, perfect. Uh... I'd like to just throw throw the light on uh, the points table if we can. Uh, obviously, the four uh, four teams who have qualified for the qualifiers: uh, Islamabad, Multan, Peshawar, Karachi. Islamabad for Islamabad United has been a big round. They were uh, they were the last they were last last year. Uh, the previous year they were sixth, and now to come back with a bang and qualify top of table. Uh, if you also see the they've won more matches than all the other five teams. Uh, the other five yeah. teams have have tussled among themselves in net run rate, I imagine. Yeah, yeah, you, you were right, Akhil. Uh, Islamabad United, two-time champions, finished last. Uh, you know, that's not that's not. It, it's like telling Mumbai Indians finishing last in the table, and it's it's just unacceptable, right? Uh, so yeah, Islamabad bouncing back to finish uh, top of the table. I'm really happy for them. I'm really happy for the captain as well. Uh, you know, uh, Shadab Khan is somebody I rate very highly. Uh, doesn't look like that. You know, when you talk about all rounders, you talk about Ben Stokes, you talk about Callis, but Shadab Khan is not seen seen that way. Yet he can deliver the way. outstanding fielder, very smart bowler, can deliver the goods with the bat. May not get hundreds, but he can certainly you know get you those quick fire twenties, thirties, forties when you need them. Uh, so that's one. Uh, and you're right, you know, you want T20 con- competitions to be like this, you know, one team's on the top, but more importantly, what you spoke about the rest of the pack, you want a tussle, tussle, you know, you want teams to compete for that playoff spot and good to see that four teams battled on 10 points and then three of them eventually made it. Yes, you, you spoke about Shadab Khan and I wanted to take your thoughts and also I wanted to share my thoughts about the Multan captain, Mohammad Rizwan. Uh, I rate him very highly. I think he's, he looks like a very, very smart guy who can go on to lead mm. the national team also. And uh, we've seen the results. Last time, Multan were number one in the points table. This time, they've come at number two. So, clearly, uh, they've got something right in their team building thing. They've, uh, they've, not been able to, uh, they've not been able to beat Islamabad for the last two matches. But uh, I, I think they have a good core now. Mm. Uh, they, they've got a good core and I like the captain as well. Mohamed Rizwan, you spoke about, you touched upon him briefly. I, I saw him and he made his test debut in Australia. Akil, I was there last year. Uh, again, he's he's a street smart cricketer. You know, he's very much like Javed Miandar. You know, he's cheeky. Uh, he's not a conventional, uh, you know, a play straight. 
uh, you know he he he's, he, he's not afraid to have a word or two he's a cheeky cricketer smart street smart cricketer and i like that he's really um, put on his strike rate if you see he, when he came in he wasn't really the big hitter but now he's really worked on his strike rate when he's got the opportunity i think he's become a very very reliable top order yeah. batsman now not just a keeper you you hit the nail on the head reliable akil you know how often do we use the word reliable in t20 cricket uh, but mohammad rizwan's become a reliable cricketer now uh, we've not seen a lot of him in the past but ever since he's become an international cricketer he's seeing a mature and get better with time absolutely so should we just have a look at the the matches which are coming up the, there are two games which are scheduled on the same day uh, first mm-hmm. is the qualifier and obviously then the eliminator uh so mm. both are scheduled on the same day both are uh, scheduled at abu dhabi stadium islamabad versus multan arun uh, we know we spoke about islamabad having won both the encounters in the uh, in in the league phase but obviously mm. a knockout is going to be different right it, it, it's it's a knockout yes but it's not a knock, knockout in, in in the in the literal term of uh, literal term sense uh because this gives them another opportunity Fun even if chance. islamabad lose today it gives them another opportunity but but hey uh if i'm multan sultan i'm thinking win the toss put islamabad in because islamabad have chased well and their only opportunity uh, only to defeat defeats the season came when they batted first so if i'm multan i'm thinking let's take a chance there's not too much to read into those stats or performances but hey even if i'm getting a 1% chance i'll take it so put islamabad in um, maybe get them out for about 150 160 and and try and chase it down fantastic okay so the second game is peshawar versus karachi uh, i'm sure both the teams will be feeling a little let down uh, going at on third and fourth position just because of net run rate uh both of them would have said we also would have deserved one more chance if we would have qualified number 2 because of net run rate and uh, karachi obviously is a is a team which has which has uh, babar azam who's been in the phenomenal uh, form so we'll come to come to babar azam later but uh, your picks for the peshawar versus karachi game how how for how have the teams uh, fared in the in the league against each other i think they've shared they've shared the spoils it, it's one match a piece uh, between them in the league season uh, i'm 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 slightly tilted towards zalmi peshawar zalmi uh, there's something about that team uh, i'm just going to read through their the lineup quickly akil uh, you know they look a well balanced team uh, led by, by Sh- wahabia Le- exactly led by wahabia <laughs> how often do we see this but you know the, uh, there are other players in that side i like the shoaib malik i'm a huge fan of him fabian allen i think i've mentioned this in the past as well uh, he he's a live wire on the field fidel edwards can 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 hasn't given up at 38 years of age he still hasn't given up he's still picking up wickets uh, got got a call up to the west indies national team not too long ago hazratul azizai kamran akmal no matter how old he become he's becoming he's turning 39 i think still still keeps getting runs at the top of the order so this david melo so so there's plenty of talent one of the better teams in the competition i think and hence i'm i'm leaning towards zalmi to 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 go through in this okay fantastic so uh, incidentally both the games that that these teams played against each other the victory margin was 6 wickets for for mm. each of them so both Correct. of them preferred to chase against each other and one So maybe there's a pattern there. Maybe batting second uh, is something that all teams are looking at, especially considering the matches. There will be debater also. Uh, both the matches will be played completely under lights. So I'm sure both the teams will want to chase uh, chase targets uh, going into each of the games. Yes and no, Akil. I I don't know. Again, it's it's the comfort level of the team. It's about the surface on the day. But I'll also tell you this quickly. Read out a stat for you. You know, this has been a tournament of two legs. You know. the first leg you know before that covid break uh of the 14 games played 13 were won by the team chasing right so it was clearly you know uh, win the toss bowl first game is in your hand post that break in the second leg of the 16 games played 10 were won by the team batting first six by the team batting second so there's not so much to read into the numbers it's more about the comfort of the team uh Yeah, but but hey, uh, teams have gotten to the top four. They made it to the top four, so they know what they know what works well for them. 
uh like i said islamabad doesn't matter to them it's what matters to their opponent and for their opponent multan santal i think it's you know let's let's put them in let's get islamabad to bat first maybe we have a chance there all right fantastic so i'm not going to ask you for who your who you think as a winner we'll give that for the last one i wanted to first uh, run through the some of the top run getters that we've had for the season so um, any i mean this is a simple one right no guesses for yeah i mean who's going to be top of the table clearly pakistan's uh, best batsman dominating but, but but here's a surprise if you look through the list akil you will not see an islamabad united batsman there remember they are the top of the table team but not one islamabad batsman there that's one but uh, i mean i i i i like babar azam there i like mohammad rizwan there sarfraz ahmed again not rated highly but he's getting runs uh, sharjil khan and shoaib maksud make up the top 5 but yeah the criti- there's a lot of criticism about babar azam the t20 player i mean everybody seems to expect babar azam to be you know start with a bang he's not that that's not his game at all uh, he he probably score eight out of his first 10 balls and then catch up similar to what chris gale does these days you know chris gale back then used to start quick quick fire you know on a over drive but these days quick uh, chris gale is about you know playing out those first three overs and then catching up later so so babar azam is a class apart he belongs you know in that category of virat kohli steve smith ken williamson uh, uh joe root you know he's he's in that category uh, but, but t20 he know he understands his game well i'll take my time but i'll deliver the goods and you see that you know he's he's right on top of the runs he scored them at a pretty good strike rate as well so 134 yeah, 135 strike rate is batted at so which is not bad at all not bad at all and i'm sure he is a big match player i mean karachi obviously are the are the defending champions uh, they've been they won the title last time so i'm sure they would want a big performance from their big player in in the in the knockout in the qualifying phase now mm, mm, okay correct. so batsmen uh, we've seen the top 5 run scorers for the league uh, pakistan has always been some a place where we have looked at talent for fast bowling so can we look at the top 5 wicket takers for the league now and it's a new name there at the top akil it's yes. a guy i hadn't heard of before shan nawaz dahani he seems to have lit up the tournament uh, most with recently with his celebration also if you've seen not just with his wicket but his celebration uh, style is really getting picked on on social media and they're really uh, like it's producing a lot of memes and he's getting a lot of fame because of that yeah yes if you remember uh Uh, who is that Harris Sohail was it uh, who came up with with that celebration and you know in the champions trophy i think it was or in the world cup uh, uh, again look at that list shah nawaz dahani like i said new kid 20 wickets purple cap shaheen afridi again uh, wahab riaz captain but you know he's he's delivered the goods so there's there's three left armers there isn't it james faulkner again three left armers there You know there are lots of names you might not see there. You know we we yeah. we wanted to see a Mohammad Amir there, for instance, Harris Sohail there. We've not uh, not a Harris Sohail, but uh, uh, what's uh, anyway. So we we're not seeing a lot of familiar names there, but yeah. Uh, there is the one gentleman Arun that I've been tracking. Uh, he plays for the Islamabad United. Mohammad Wasim. He's the right hand right hand medium bat. Right hand Junior. Medium bat. Yes, and uh, he's been really, really impressive. He comes in and bowls a difficult over, and he's been really, really difficult to get away. Uh, and you mentioned uh, familiar names missing. Uh, one name that I wanted to run past, and we've spoken about him so many times on our show here, is uh, a place for Lahore Kalandars, Rashid Khan. Uh, have you had a chance to see his record? He's played eight games, eleven wickets, at an economy of five point four six with a five five four. And how does this guy keep doing it all the time? I don't know. I have no idea. But this tells you what talent he is. Huh? Oh, you mean uh, call it either it's his quick wrist arm action. Uh, I don't know what. I mean, he does it around the world. It's not just that he does it in India or in Pakistan or in the UAE. I was there when he played in the Big Bash. He did it there, you know, for the Adelaide Strikers. 
uh, he's done it in international cricket he's done it in the ipl he's done it in psl i mean he's done it in in england as well so champion absolute champion absolutely also and i mean there was a time sorry akil there was a time when i briefly thought i have to admit this i i thought he'd lost it you know his economy had dipped briefly he was going for like seven runs and over six and a half runs and over and i thought maybe batsman had cracked it like no rashid khan just said no i am the boss <laughs> all right then i mean uh, so now is the time where we ask i mean i'm going to ask you to pick your favorites uh, who are you backing to win more games are on the same day so we know the winners uh, on the same day uh, islamabad versus multan who is your pick i'm i'm going i'll give you the answer quick fire uh, it's islamabad and zalmi for me islamabad and zalmi for you so i'm going to go with islamabad and karachi i think islamabad have been very consistent but uh, i really want karachi um, i like their captain also i, I like mad wasim he does the difficult work for uh, the national team whenever he is and i think he's a very very against street style kind of cricketer so those are my picks islamabad and karachi for me we will we will know uh, we will we'll watch these games obviously and we'll know who, who who's getting across the line tonight all right and see you soon uh, we'll do one more uh, one more show where we talk about pakistan league and we'll come back and catch you guys again thank you cheers